This e-bike was deemed unfixable, so we had to prove them wrong. Over the past couple of weeks, I've been working on getting this bike back to life and what a journey it's been. From understanding how components work to stripping the entire bike down and even painting it a completely new color. And after changing the battery management system, I finally had my first victory, which meant this idea of mine was actually possible. So now we have to make this controller fit inside of this frame. So first things first, getting this controller to fit, because at the moment, well, it doesn't. And it came with a lot of features I won't be using, so I started by cutting those off just to save some extra room. And I need to make it a little smaller in width, and since I already took it out of its case, next up would be to remove this aluminum block. But there's a small problem. You see, these parts of the controller are called MOSFETs, and they get really, really hot. So they need to lose some of that heat. And since aluminum conducts that heat really well, they use this to transfer heat to another aluminum heatsink, which is the actual case, which I, of course, took out. So just ditching the heatsink wouldn't work probably. Um, so we need something that's aluminum, that's surrounded by air and preferably quite big. Um, you might see where I'm going with this. Aluminum. Surrounded by air. I think this might work. Now, is this going to work? Well, I don't know, but since I want to try and test out new ideas, I'm just going to give it a shot anyway. So I'm cutting and filing at the aluminum block to make it fit very snug in the top tube of the bike. And of course, I'm making sure to blow out any of the metal shards, just so that it's not making contact with the circuit board and possibly shorting out stuff. So finally the controller fit very snug in the top tube, where it just slightly made contact with the frame, which is just perfect. And afterwards I made the old case up to size and also added a hole in there for the aluminum of course. And this is done using a Dremel, just to make my life a bit easier. And after filing and sanding, it actually looked really clean. Next up were the lights, and because these run off of 9 volts and not the 36 volts that the controller is actually supplying, I need to reduce that voltage. And I decided to do that with a buck converter, which is this little module. Now I never worked with these things before, so definitely let me know in the comments if this is the best method out there. So I'm placing this thing beneath the controller and soldering some wires to it. And if you see more wires than expected, that's because I also need to wire up the front light. So after this thing was wired up, I used a very special high-end glue to hold all the wires in place, which is called hot glue. <laughs> and I could finally start to seal up the new controller. Next up, I need to seal the battery with a new end cap to avoid any moisture getting in there. So I started on drawing a new cap by using the shape of the previous one. And after tracing the shape as precise as possible, I gave it some measurements and added the screw holes as well. And by using as little material as possible, I was able to print this for only 32 cents of filament, since the entire cap only weighs about 13 grams. I then chucked it onto the Ender, which is sort of the cheapest 3D printer out there, and it began printing with some white PLA. And after letting it print overnight, the thing was done, so I snapped it off of the build plate and even painted it black, even though no one will ever see this thing again, but it just matched the battery a little bit better. 
Then I just screwed it down onto the battery and this job was also done. After 3D printing the battery cap, my brother got a new resin printer. And since we wanted to give that a try, I decided to print the housing for this AirTag. And since the VanMove had a tracker and now it doesn't, this is quite a cheap alternative and it might not be a perfect tracker, but it helps a bit. So I pressed print and after curing and some cleaning, it actually looked really good and the detail is amazing on these prints. So the AirTag is ready to be snapped into place and after drilling a small hole, the new tracker of this bike is now in place. Now it's time to get back to building the actual bike. So I first made sure to get all of the cables inside the frame, just so I could then start to fish all of them out again. And after playing fishy for a long time, I could start to solder the wires. And I got all of the wires and connectors from a scrapped e-bike for free, so that should help me with the budget pretty well. I took some pictures of everything before assembly, so it wasn't too bad to figure out which cable went where. And after assembling the kick lock, which I will just use a button for from now on, it was time to finish up on the pedal sensor and after that finally putting the battery in. Then I could finally re-grease and assemble the headset, put the handlebars back on and finally adjust the headset for play. And afterwards, I made sure to solder the final wires and, well, disaster struck. So after all of that time and effort that I put into this bike, it decided that it doesn't want to be an electric bike anymore. So, <laughs> so I tested everything before I put it in the bike. And of course it all worked. And now that it's inside of the bike, it doesn't work. So maybe I broke something, maybe something shorted out. Um, but yeah, the motor doesn't work, the kick lock doesn't work, and even the lights don't work. So yeah, I think that's just part of the experience of fixing bikes and doing DIY stuff in general. I'll meet back with you guys once it's fixed because I'm not going to film everything again and bore you guys with the same stuff. Um, so see you once this is fixed. So to give myself a little break from e-bike hell, I just started to sand and paint other parts black, just to give them a bit of a newer and cleaner appearance. And something that I wasn't really expecting was the amount of rust on these fenders. And it might be the type of steel that they used or the quality of the coating, but I had a lot of work fixing up these rusty spots. I also made sure to touch up the cranks, so this bike should be pretty scratch free when it's finished and all looking really nice. And while that was curing, it was about time to destroy some controllers. Um, things did not really go as planned. So um, here I am, just having fun, just working on the bike, having a blast, right? No, wrong. So <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm just working on the controller and I had the thing like without this case dangling over here. Um, which I should know better, but I was just trying to fix the problem. And then suddenly a lot of sparks come flying off the thing. And um, of course it shorted out somewhere. And I tried everything, looked at every cable and I, I just could not find the thing which shorted out. Until I wanted to wire in uh, this brake cable because it has to go all the way in the back over here. Um, so I thought might as well do something like that. And I noticed that this cable is actually pretty damn short um and then <laughs> i found this piece of cable on the floor and both of these have a burnt uh, edge or burnt tip so um yeah i think it's safe to assume uh, what happened here so because this is sort of a prototype bike and i yeah just need to put the controller in and then take it out again and just keep wiring up all of that stuff it might be best to make sort of a controller box for now which is outside of the frame um, because now i know the controller can fit inside of the frame but i might just make something that houses it outside of the frame just so i can work on it for now and then once i rode around on a bike for maybe a couple of months or something and i'm happy with everything then i can wire it in inside of the bike so we need a sort of short-term solution which also looks decent because i think <laughs> i like things to be a little bit tidy um, so I might have to come up with something like that. 
So this is what I came up with. A little 3D printed box that houses the controller and all of the cables. And I painted it black to match the stealth of the bike and while curing I moved on with the brakes. Luckily these are mechanical disc brakes, which means that they operate with a normal cable instead of any hydraulic fluid. And when these are adjusted properly, they have pretty decent stopping power without all of the mess hydraulic brakes bring with them. Next up was mounting a lot of stuff back up to the bike and after that was done, it was time to finish the little controller box. Now that everything is ready for assembly, I can finally start to wire everything up one last time. And as you can see, the controller fit perfectly without any uh, cruel modifications needed. So even though I said last time, you will see me switching this controller over again to a silver one, because this one happened to have some faults and some defects out of the factory, which I found out later. So it's safe to say that I've done enough soldering by now for this project. But because it's so close to being finished, I just kept working on it every spare evening that I had just to finish this project and also create this video. And I'm sorry that it took this long to upload it, but i rather just create quality than quantity, so that's why it took a little bit longer than expected. So beneath this top tube there are two buttons, which one of them controls the rear light, as you can probably see right now. Um, and the other one, as you are able to hear, controls the kick lock. ASMR. So that should in theory be enough to lock this bike because I can code this button in the um, display. But just to be safe, I'm gonna put a ring lock or a frame lock, I don't know what it's called actually in English, uh, just over here, maybe with a little chain around it because I don't want to spend all of this time on this bike just to get it stolen tomorrow. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do in the future. But for now, the kick lock works. So that's actually pretty nice. And I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with that. Then it was about time to wire up those brakes since I have a feeling that this bike is able to do a little more than the original 25 kilometers an hour. That being said, I am able to program the display with a limiter, which makes it legal on the roads in the Netherlands. When adjusting these brakes, you want to follow three steps. The first thing you want to do is center the caliper over the disc. And after that, you push the inner brake pad very close up to the disc, just barely without it touching. And then you can adjust the outer brake pad via the cable tension. And back to the topic of lights, it seems like the bug converter ended up destroying my first controller, so I will not be using that again. So what I did for the lights is buying some 36 volt ones and just swapping the internals to the original housings. And this way I now have some really bright lights that keep me safe at night since I live in a country where it's almost always dark. 
And after fixing the lights, I taped some cables together and I also put some clear stickers over the paint where it could get damaged. And I also went out and bought a lock, but it did not look good at all due to the silver backing. So I made sure to paint that black as well. And since I needed some decent bolts for the case, I decided that it was about time to go for my first test drive. The bike worked amazing during its first test drive and apart from a few minor adjustments like speed settings and stuff, it's pretty perfect. So when I got home I made sure to change out all of the bolts and make everything look very clean. And also I put some bolts in the top tube that I've lost during this build. And I know what you're all wondering and I'm thinking the same thing, how much did this build cost? So the main cost was 175 bucks for the bike, including two batteries. And of those batteries, I sold one for 100 euros, but I did need to buy the controllers, of course. One of the controllers was faulty, so I got some money back there. So in total, I spent around 250 bucks on this bike, which is a really great deal, at least in my opinion. And look at it. I think it looks amazing and it's fast and it's even unique. So I like to think this really is a one of a kind bike right now. So I'm more than happy to have this. So that's another project finished. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this sort of stuff, please subscribe down below and um, I hope to see you next time.